The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show. I am your guest host, CammieBaker.com, and today we are going to be talking about philanthropic networking. And I had never even heard of that term, but we just made it up today, I think. I don't know, Katie, is it a term you made up? No, or is... uh, I think so. Well, we've got Katie Cook here so. with us. Katie, share us with us a little bit about yourself. How are you? Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm Katie Cook. Formerly, I'm with Comfort Home Care. We are a skilled visiting nursing agency and we specialize in dealing with patients with mental illness. So within healthcare and within that sort of field of, you know, um, that type of clientele, we have a lot of homeless individuals, we work with a lot of veterans, a lot of disabled individuals. Uh, one of the things that I have started doing is helping people, which I love doing, which has been really awesome. So uh, I network by default as a salesperson. I'm always out networking, meeting people, meeting business contacts, trying to grow my business. My goal is to grow my business. But um, I actually looked up the definition uh, for fun. Uh, the conventional modern definition of philanthropy is a private initiative for the public good focusing on quality of life. In contrast to philanthropy, we have business endeavors which are private initiatives for private good. Well, why can't we have private initiative for public good and private good? Mm -hmm. I just, why not? Uh -huh. So, um, and, I, and I hate the stigmatism around, you know, the idea of people announcing what you're doing for philanthropic work. I'm constantly posting online what I'm doing. I want people to see what I'm doing and I want them to want to do it as well. A um, couple of just little examples of that. Um, my daughter made up homeless period bags. Women, homeless women, struggle every month with their period. And tampons and pads are very expensive. So her and one of her girlfriends got together. They're 13 years old. They made up these little bags, and we distributed them out. How do you distribute them out? Um, we use, uh, so in Haverhill, Massachusetts, this uh, wonderful godsend of a man, Joe Damore, runs a program, the Mary Mac Valley Mission Hope, Hope Mission, and he services homeless people, individuals. Um, and then I took a few of them and I passed them out directly to the homeless shelters. These are the kind of goods uh, they're not getting. You know, they get food, which is great, um, but you know, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of extra needs. So I post something like this on Facebook and my goal is to inspire other moms to see that and to invite their daughters or sons to do the same thing. Because frankly, periods keep coming every month, whether we want them or not. So why not support those women? And then, you know, it all comes back to, so the idea of philanthropic networking is, the idea of networking is, is we're doing that and we're going out and we're traveling to each of the homeless shelters and we're passing them out our little bags and they're thanking us and I'm networking with the individual who's there. And then what I can do later on is come back and say, we're comfort home care. Here's what we do. We provide skilled visiting nursing. So you're medically compromised homeless individuals, which there are a lot of them. This is the type of client that we can service. Mm. I do something very similar with the Veterans Organization. I work closely with the Veterans Northeast Outreach Center of Haverhill, and I run a number of programs for them. I'm talking programs that we just make up and we do. Mm. And what happens is, as I am working on those programs, I meet their social workers, I tell their social workers what I do, they give me business. It's win-win all around. I have a phenomenal program running right now, and you like you use the word cause marketing, which I which I think is so incredible. Um, I work with the Pleasant Valley Farms in Methuen. The Bonanno family, very nice. They run a very small family farm, and they do crop sharing. Are you familiar with crop sharing? Uh, fill us in. Crop sharing is you buy in in the beginning of the year to the farm. A bunch of people buy in, and each week when the vegetables are harvested, they get delivered right to you. Huh. 
So the idea that what the idea that we came up with, and we work with the Veterans Food Bank out of Haverhill and the Bonanno family, has signed up to say, okay, you can be going and buy a crop share, but each week instead of you getting the food, the food is going to go directly to the Veterans Food Bank. And yes, the food bank does an incredible job. They have pastas canned vegetables, lots of boxed goods, all that kind of stuff, which is really nice. But it is nice to have some fresh vegetables and it's expensive. So people can buy in. So great for um, Luann who runs the farm. She is out there promoting it, promoting it. Well, guess what? She's doing cause marketing without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. People are buying in. Phenomenal people go to that farm because I'll tell you, they, they'll buy themselves a whole crop share they'll buy a crop share for the veterans, which is really, really great. And so there, she's promoting her farm. She's got more people buying into it. It's helping them make money. And at the same time, it's helping the veterans. You know, there's so way, so many ways to, to use the term cause marketing, and it means yeah. something different to everyone. For her, she's directly helping a cause and building her business because of it. And so with the different people that I work with, it really just kind of depends. So like uh, real estate agents we were talking about earlier, when I help real estate agents put together a group of um, businesses that are veteran owned, veteran focused, that help veterans, it gives them a chance to just get out in the marketplace and meet hundreds, thousands of people without their business card. Yep. Without, hey, I'm a real estate agent. Who do you know that wants to buy or sell? It's more like, hey, I want to help the veterans. You yeah. know, who do you know that's a veteran owned business or businesses that support veterans? Because I'm putting together this whole list so the whole community knows what businesses to use that support our veterans, blah, blah, blah. And as they're talking, it just gives them a way to break the ice, to get their foot in the door, yeah. to build relationships. Absolutely. It, it is. It's all about relationship building. That's what networking is, relationship building. And I think people have a hard time going in. Uh, I had a new, I have a new employee, Andrew. He's wonderful. And he's in the South Shore. And we went into the Brockton VA last week, two days ago. And, you know, we give our spiel, here's who we are, here's what we do. Okay, there are other people that do what we do as well. Well, one of the gentlemen had mentioned in the meeting that he was looking for clothing, men's clothing, for veterans to be able to do interviews. I said, well, you know what, from now on, you call Andrew. When you have those little needs, why don't you let Andrew handle them? And the idea is, Andrew goes out and does those things. Yes, these are people who are sending us referrals. But you, Andrew, go out you go call your friends and say, hey, you guys dig through your closet. You got any nice clothes? You know, you're not wearing because, you know, we all wear the same five outfits over and over mm -hmm. again. Why don't you give me your clothes? Let's get them dry clean and let's get them over to the VA. And then you're going back in the door now. And only you're not back in the door saying, hey, here's who I am, Andrew from Comfort Home Care. Give me business. You're saying, hey, guys, you need clothes. Here's clothes. Well, guess what? The next time a patient comes up and requires services and they look at the list and they go, oh, Andrew, Comfort Home Care. Done. No brainer. Well, and this is a great example of, you know, like you said, there's a stigma around telling people what you do. But the fact is, Andrew only has so many suits. His three or four or ten friends only have so many. But when he puts on social media, hey, this is what we're looking for. Yep. This is a specific size that they need. Here's why we're doing it. Here's the folks we're doing it for. To your point, and I tell my clients this all the time, when you promote it on social media, you're also inspiring people in Florida or Texas yeah. or California to do the same thing in their area. Yeah. So not only are you getting more clothes here for the people that need it, but you're also inspiring other people to do it. Social proof, people get ideas. And as he's saying that, he can say, our clients at the VA need this stuff. Yeah. And by the way, this is our type of client. When you know a person who's in this situation and needs somebody like us, this is the kind of thing we do for our people. Exactly. It's exactly. To me, it's a no-brainer. I don't understand why it's so taboo, why the yeah. idea of giving is supposed to be private. It actually drives me crazy. There was a local <laughs> pastor who posts on Facebook, um, I don't know, it was a couple months ago, but he posted something to the, to the effect of, God doesn't want you to gloat about your giving. Mm. I, I'm sorry. God does want me to gloat. God mm. does want me to. You know why? God, I'm, I'm a religious person and I believe that I'm put here. And the idea is uh, God is using me as a tool to drive other people to help them learn how to. Conduit. I, exactly. Yeah. I believe that, and I'm not uber crazy religious, but I, I really believe that everyone wants to help. Everybody does, and it's all about how you can help. So how can I help find the right way for you 
to help. Th that's it. Some people like to give five bucks. Some people like to give 5,000 bucks. Some people like to show up and put together goods. Some people like to work hand in hand with the individuals. So I, I love that you bring that up because I share with my clients all the time. They, they, sometimes they feel like, well, I don't want to beg for stuff. I don't want, I don't want people to feel put out. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to feel like I'm coming after them to get something. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Let me ask you something. When you do something for someone else, does it make you feel good? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it makes you feel good, don't you think it makes everybody else feel good too? Mm -hmm. So when you actually don't beg for help, but offer to give them the opportunity yep. to be of service, you are helping them by giving them the opportunity to help. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it, it seems like a no-brainer. It really, really does. Um, I run an Easter egg party for, an Easter egg hunt for the Department of Children and Family out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. And I, Throw, I'll throw a post on Facebook. I need 2,000 eggs, seven tablecloths, 100 paper plates, 100 cups, um, whatever. You know, we come up with a list. I post the list. Anybody who wants to sign up for something, sign up. And I'll get somebody who signs up and says, I'll get five cases of water. I'll, I'll stuff 200 eggs. I, you know, when you told me about that, I'm like, I want to know about that because yeah. this past Easter, my daughter's 20 mm -hmm. and all her growing up, you know, it was fun to go do the baskets, do the Easter egg hunt. This year, she was, she's too old for that, but yeah. I got a, um, a laundry basket and I filled it up with all this kind of stuff, she, <laughs> cleaning products, candles, yeah. fun stuff for her yeah. house. So now this is a new tradition yeah. of, of Easter egg basket like that. Yeah. But I wanted to do an Easter egg hunt. I thought, well, I don't really have anybody to hide the eggs for and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's so much fun. I would yeah. love to participate. It, well, you know what? And it is fun. And I can't tell you the number of people who call me because I've done it for a few years now who are calling me going, um, we're, we're signing up for 200 eggs. I haven't even put the post out yet. And they're going, you're signing me up for 200 eggs, right? I've got a day plan with my grandchildren and they're coming over and we're doing this and it's a great opportunity. Mm. Really, really important for me is um, teaching and educating children now mm -hmm. about the importance of philanthropic work mm -hmm. and philanthropic networking. For children, they have no, there's no end goal. They have no product to sell. I think it's just important to teach them that now that even if you do have a product to sell at the end, and, and my kids watch me do it all the time and uh, so many other kids. Uh, I know a phenomenal, phenomenal young lady um, Jessica Weller, and she started this incredible program. She's out of Wyndham, New Hampshire. It's called Kids in Service. I live in Wyndham. Yes, in yes, yeah. So Jessica is awesome. And Jessica comes up with events, activities, just different types of things that kids can do to, to help, to participate. Like, let's teach them young. She has a cute little newsletter. It's really cute. Look her up on Facebook, Kids in Service, New Hampshire. And um, when my daughter Michaela had made those homeless period bags, she sent her a wonderful letter. It was just a letter. It was a handwritten card and, mm. it, and it said, great job. I'm highlighting you as a special kid in service. You're doing a great job. That positive reinforcement coming from a stranger built her self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And the self-confidence is built on not materialistic things, not on her looks, not on how smart she is. It was built on her doing good. Mm -hmm. And that is what I think if we teach children that young and we encourage that young enough, then that sticks with them through for life. I, I know that it does because my daughter's 20 now. When she was younger, I would take her, we would go four or five years in a row on Thanksgiving, we went to the homeless shelter yeah. and we worked in the kitchen and she was too young to be in the kitchen with the knives and everything, but they had a food pantry in Manchester. So she would go and help sort the, the cans, yep. you know, they had thousands of corn and peas and yep. whatever. And she's in there doing that. So I had her doing all that stuff with me. And about six months ago, we were riding the car together and there was somebody homeless with a sign and I never give money, but I've always got food in my car. I've got fruit cups. I've got granola bars yeah. for me, you know, fruit. Yeah. Just yesterday, I handed a guy a couple of uh, 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 oranges. So I said to her, I, I put my window down. I said, I never give him money, but I've always got food. I always give him a fruit cup. She goes... I know, mom. I tell my friends all the time, <laughs> my mom keeps extra fruit and granola bars and, get, and she's being kind of, you know, snarky yes, about yes, it. Sassy, yes. But how awesome. Yeah. That she knows that. Yeah. And that she tells people that and that 
once again, social proof. Other people, people want to be a part of something. Not only do they want to give and be a contribution, human beings are very social creatures. We want to be a part of something yeah. bigger than ourselves. I, I think we have to be. I, I, I do. I think you have to be, and it's um, part of survival. I have a couple, uh, I have an, uh, like an aunt, like an in-law, and we were at a birthday party, and her two sisters were there, and they're two older women. And they looked at me and they said, wow, you, you really figured it out very young. And I said, what out? I'm just, I'm just winging it. I feel like I'm constantly just winging life and trying to, you know, just do and keep doing and doing. And they said, you know, that happiness comes from helping other people. Mm. And if you can figure that out at a young enough age, you're happy. Then you're happy with your life. Happiness is a choice. I, I truly believe you wake up every day and you have to say, I'm happy today. Okay, it's rain. Guess what, guys? It's been raining for 60 days now. We know it's raining. That's nice. I'm still happy. You happen to be on the Happiness Jungle TV show. Yes, you know. yes, I do know. And our founder, Miss <laughs> Lindy Eldridge, will love hearing this part from you yeah, because yeah. You know, that's that's what she that's what she preaches. Yeah. That's what she's all about. And when you said that they said, hey, you know, you've learned that happiness comes from helping other people. I know for myself, when I've been down. Or if I'm just in a bad place or, you know, I always tell people the best way to, to, to help get out of that is to go help somebody else. Yeah. Get out of your head. Not, you know, the, people say, you know, no matter how bad you have it, other people have it worse. And, yeah. you know, there's just so many reasons for giving back and helping. We do it actually with, we have a lot of, because our Comfort Home Care deals with mentally ill individuals, we have a number of depressed individuals. And, and depression is one of those things, um, severe depression, but we're seeing a lot of depression with older individuals now. Um, you know, they're home, they're alone, uh -huh. they can't do anything. So one of the things my nurses will do, come on, it's time to get up. Let's go. Let's open some windows. Let's let's let some fresh air in. Let's go for a walk. Let's do any kind of that stuff. And and Jessica with her kids in service does a whole program for elders where the kids go hang out. Just go hang out with an old person. Imagine that. Mm. It's such a novel concept. But well, think about all the wisdom that can be imparted. I used to date a guy who worked at a um, an assisted living. Yeah. And, you know, just on a daily basis when he was bathing them and dressing them and all that, the conversations they would have, he just, there were so many things that he knew that the average person wouldn't know that just the conversation, how, how yeah. wise they are. And, and he would say, uh, you know, so-and-so passed away today. And, and he would say, you know, what that person really shared with me was, you know, People don't regret what they've what they've done. They regret what they didn't do. Yeah. 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 And he talked to just hundreds of people in their 80s and 90s and hundreds mm -hmm. that would share that same kind of message. Don't wait. Don't hold back. Don't be afraid to tell her you love her. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask that guy on a date. Yeah. Like, whatever it is, go yeah. for it. So uh, if, if the one thing I could get, you know, the idea of network marketing, the one thing if I could say to anybody watching this program is go out. Figure out what you can do, how you can help, how you want to help, and just go do it. Like, just go. If you are passionate about animals, go, maybe you don't have the ability to foster a dog, but go to the dog fostering place and maybe you can be sharing their stuff on social media. Something as simple as sharing someone's stuff on social media and encouraging mm -hmm. other people or, um, you know, Foster a dog or go hang out with the dogs. Go go play with them for an hour. If you don't have money to give, give your time. And, and guess what? Playing with dogs is really fun. <laughs> then you also get to have a really good time, yeah. you know? So, um, and if you're passionate about old people, go to the senior center and say, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. They're constantly looking for volunteers for things. And you know what? If you're not that kind of person who's going to go sit with an old person or play with a dog, but maybe you have a skill. You're a plumber, you're an electrician. Guess what? There are a lot of those people who need some help. There's a lot of older individuals who live on severely fixed incomes, who are stuck in their houses, who aren't going out anymore. Offer your services to help. Well, you change know, a, an outlet, fix, change a light bulb. I, you know, even you don't have to be an electrician to change a light bulb, but you know what I mean, go do it. Use your talents to help other people. And doing that, you're going to promote yourself. Well, the whole campaign that I was telling you about, you know, neighbors in need to be, to have a real estate person, a plumber, all these different people in real estate to put out to the world, hey, you know, here in our Haverhill or Manchester or Jacksonville or wherever you are, yeah. let people know you want to help a hundred people with little things like mm -hmm. that. Got that outlet that hasn't worked in 10 years? 
you take two dollars and 30 minutes and you yeah. fix it and it changes their life you know yeah. so there's so many ways you can help and while you're out and you talk about it on social media you know let people know let yeah. them be inspired to go do something else and that's especially business. because maybe you don't have the thirty dollars or fifty dollars to buy them a new light fixture fan but there could be somebody else out there who does have the thirty or forty dollars and is willing to give that to to help an old person's have a new light fixture fan but don't have the ability to go change it you know mm -hmm. partner up partner up with these people and and funding there's a lot of people out there who want to give money and don't have the ability to give time or the talent that you might have so utilize you look inside you and and what can you do and then just go do it and call me if you can't figure it out or you're looking for i cannot tell you the number of people who reach out to me on a weekly basis looking for saying i want to give to veterans i want to give to this I, I, my passion is kids what can i do absolutely let's get you paired up let's mm. get you paired up with somebody so what do you think what happened in your life that made you so philanthropic i have no idea i am very 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 blessed i live a very nice life um i've come from a very strong stable home my parents are phenomenal my father's company did well um you know I never missed a champagne brunch and there's a lot of people out there um when i was doing my phd work i spent uh, a lot of time abroad uh, you know i i was in turkey in eastern turkey um where the kurds are and i'm i'm not sure how familiar you are with with that region of the world or everything that happens but these are people who live on a mountain houses are built they're like shacks they go to the bathroom outside their door it flows to the bottom of the hill and in the spring when it rains too much they're literally surrounded by a moat of feces and can't leave. And they're just stuck and their kids don't go to school and they just live up there for like a few weeks in spring and it's, and it's, these people are, these people are poor, like real poor. Uh, there's, and there's no services. That's not real. Services like that, that are offered in the US, those don't exist in the rest of the world. Mm. These are the people who really like starve to death. Mm. And when you see that and you come home and it's like, what am I doing? Well, you know, um, my mom does this thing. What are you thankful for at Thanksgiving? Or, you know, you go around the table at someone's birthday. What's your favorite thing about this person or whatever? And, and when I when I think about what I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for clean water, mm. clean running water. That's 80% of the world literally doesn't have that. And we all take for granted, you know, we yeah. just turn a faucet on. And so what am I, what am I doing with my life? I, I've seen horrible places. What am I doing with my life? Mm. What, how am I getting into heaven? You know, what is it, you know, that's easier to get a camel through the eye of a needle? <laughs> how, what am I doing? Yeah. But, but the, and the more I started doing it, the more I realized I have a lot of fun doing it. I host a fishing trip for veterans, uh, for disabled and homeless veterans. And I round up my veteran friends who are not disabled to go and string up fishing lines and carry wheelchairs on the boat. And I don't, I never go on the trip. It's, they go, it's mm. their thing, it's their jam. So they go and I see them off. And when I come back at the end, they're all so happy. And they tell me this was the best day of their life. And mm. my friends who go donate their time say, this was, this was so incredible to give back. These are veterans giving back to veterans saying, mm. oh, yeah. saying I came home with legs. I came home mentally in, in the right state of mind. What can I do? What can I do to help? So I love seeing people happy helping. I, my heart is full and that's, and that's a good thing. So I wish everyone else's heart could be as full as mine. Well, I wish everyone's heart was as full as yours <laughs> too. You know, when I hear stories like uh, like Tony Robbins talks about when he was nine, ten yep. years old, and you know the 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 guy comes knocking at the door carrying the turkey and the food for Thanksgiving, and and how their family was so poor, and because of that is why he feeds how many million people mm -hmm. a year yeah. now at this point. Um, so he, you know there were stories in his history of you know really being in need and so yeah. the fact that you weren't that you actually were raised you know very well um but but are able to see all the need in the world is just it's just so wonderful Thank and and, you. and and you know getting out like you said getting out of the country and being able to come back and be so grateful I've often thought many times, you know how they have this, the scared straight the, where they bring yeah. some of the kids into the prison you know there's so many kids that are so entitled 
You know, mm. when you talk about doing these things to get the kids out in, in philanthropy, so many of them are so entitled and they just don't know what it's like to need or want. I get it. As a parent, you don't want your kid to suffer. Mm. You don't ever want your kid to, to need or want. You, you don't. I, I understand that. But there's got there's got to be a balance. Mm -hmm. There has to be a balance, and, and you have to get to a point where you that learn it on your own. So that's why I say get it in as young as possible, as you know, that portion of it. Well, and and children really do uh, take in what we're doing oh, and the examples yeah. around them. So mm -hmm. you know, normally when I have someone on, I ask them to. Uh, tell people what's a book that you would recommend or, or what's an affirmation or something, but you've already given so many oh. wonderful tips <laughs> about what they can actually yeah, do. Yeah, to... anything. Just do anything. Um, a lot of church organizations, even if you're not a member of that church, are often doing food pantries and good things and and just reach reach out. If you have children, please look up Kids in Service. Um, even if you don't live in Jessica's area, copy what she's doing please mm, please mm -hmm. if you don't live in the new hampshire area take her model copy it i don't care if you copy her her newsletter her words she won't care either it's the idea of you know getting them out there so so what's looking. what's next for katie cook oh that's a good question <laughs> your, plate, your plates are so full you're no. running your your family's business you're doing all this philanthropy what's next for you i don't know that's a, been a. You ever thought about writing a book? Been a tasking. I'm a horrible writer. That's okay. Horrible. I, you know, let me fix oh. that. Not write a book, author a book. Maybe. That's different. I could do that. I was thinking about starting a podcast. Ooh, I could see that. Mm -hmm. you're, you're very chatty. You're very, very friendly. Very chatty. <laughs> very gregarious and outgoing. I could see yeah. that. What would it, what would the name of it be? I don't know. I don't know. I could see you doing I that. work with a networking group. Uh, Next Generation Leaders of the Merrimack Valley. And it's a group that I really like to help promote. I like helping promote young people starting business. Mm. So something along that idea. I love those uh, the groups that you hear about that, that do the micro loans. You know, for 50 yes. bucks, you can yeah. help somebody in another country start a whole business for mm -hmm. $50. So that's something to talk about. Well, Happiness Jungle TV show is so happy. Thank to you. have Katie Cook on the show. You've been a blessing. It's been my honor to meet you, and I'm so glad that we are starting a relationship. Like, seriously, it's been wonderful. Yeah. This has been wonderful. And, so. and to see what I appreciate else you guys having me. Happiness Jungle is, it fits perfect for me. It really does. Thank you for being on the show. And thank you for watching the Happiness Jungle TV show, where it's a jungle, but we try to keep <laughs> it happy. <laughs>